Hey, Steve Basic Architect, out here for the build show. So we're out at our Riverside project today, and what I have here, some of you might be familiar with it, some of you might not, but these are basically hold downs for shear panels. So the typical application, you can see it has a metal strap for, I don't know, this is probably about 18 inches, with a whole series of holes. Every one of these holes will get filled with nails, but the piece on the bottom here where it's slightly bent in and they'll, they'll probably bend that in a little bit more, but notice the big hook, it has some dimples here. From here down, that's what gets embedded in the concrete. And then this comes up the outside of the wall, gets nailed off to the shear wall, that's the portal of the garage. And what that basically does is it keeps that wall from racking um, due to wind load, seismic loads, um, basically any horizontal shear load. When this wall wants to traverse left or right, this is what keeps that plate from ripping up off of the, uh, what you call it, off the foundation. And the anchor bolts certainly assist, but this is in addition to the standard anchor bolts here. We'll have a couple anchor bolts, but this is in addition to that. Now, the little twist here is typically these get placed right here and there'll be a pair of them. There'll be one on, on the outside of the wall, one here near the opening spread out. Like I said, they get embedded down in the concrete to about there. But one of the issues of putting them on the outside of the wall is you get a lot of spalling here. And you can see, even if I bend this in a little, this isn't getting a whole lot of concrete out of that plane. So the builder, I'm just discussing it with him, he likes to put it on the inside of the wall. That means that this back face is now two and a half inches in from the outside of the concrete wall. So this part of it gets full embedment down into the bottom of the wall. And we don't have that spalling, as well as all of our siding and shear and all of that stuff. Um, our, our shear panel is gonna lay nice and flat, and we'll just put that on the inside. Now, what we're gonna do is on the inside, we'll continue the shear panel, and we'll actually plywood on the inside of that with a half inch piece of plywood. This will get attached to a bunch of uh, two bys in the wall system. All right, so quick trip back. Foundation has obviously been poured, but here you can see those shear connectors. If we move around here, you can see how they're now embedded in the concrete, and then we'll have the wall frame, the plate get placed there, and the wall frame come up, and we'll have make sure that we have uh, double studs and some post action there. And then you can see here in the middle, same thing two straps and then likewise we have a complementary set on this side so you get to see the post pouring post placement of those in the foundation hey everybody so hopefully you enjoyed that we got to go check it out before we had concrete and then uh, was able to make a trip back there and uh, get those hold downs and get some video shot after we had those in place so Got my good friend Big Red. He's ready to lay down some ink here. I got a nice detail. We're going to talk about uh, what we did out there. Maybe a little bit about shear walls and garage door portals and all that good stuff. So let's have at it. All right. So broke out one of the drawings here. So this is the building elevation. You can see the backdrop of the house. But here we have... The foreground, the elevation of that garage door, um, garage door portals, multiple garage doors. So you can see here, there's two garage doors. And I also clipped a couple of the uh, floor plans here. Um, so this is the partial foundation plan. So you can see. It calls out the Simpson SDH, which is a standard 14-inch uh, hold down. So and you can see the locations there, just like we did out on the job site. And then the two in the middle, and then the two there. So basically six times we have those. We have two 10-foot doors. We have the 
two sidewalls here are two feet, which is pretty much the minimum. You can go actually in the code book, and I think I reference it here, garage door shear wall construction in accordance with, uh, yeah, R602.10.6.2. So you can go look at that. That's a code reference where they actually draw the uh, portal. And um, But basically what we're trying to do is that you, you have this wall here that starts out as a nice big wall. And then we cut in these two holes and we leave a little bit of wall there and a little bit of wall here. Well, what happens um, during wind or a seismic event is, you know, these portals, these want to change and move in this direction. And because we've taken this large wall and minimized it to just these two sections on the side, well, somehow we've got to get the strength that's built in the foundation here and here up into that portal and create a resistance in this direction. So you can see here it calls out for two 11 and 7 8 inch IVL, LVLs full length. So the headers don't just go to the opening, they actually go all the way to the end here like that. And in the code I think it calls for a minimum of those being 12 inches nominal. So we have them as 11 and 7 8 inch LVL. And it's two of them, and granted, the, the two LVLs are probably way overkill for that 10-foot span, given the um, little roof load we're carrying there. But what we're really trying to do is the shear that happens in that wall system, we're trying to drag it to the sides. So think of this LVL as kind of a long horizontal beam, which it is, but... What it's really doing is, is it's taking all these shear forces and it's trying to put them into that wall. And the way you put it into that wall is the sheathing that goes over this wall gets a bunch of nails into that header. And they're usually a three inch on center, I believe, according to that code reference. So that sheathing really gets um, bulleted with a bunch of nails to make a really strong connection of that sheathing to that beam. And what we're really trying to do is create a relatively rigid structure in that corner and this corner here, and then take that shear and bring it down. So if we can create a rigid structure here, that sets up the portals to be, let's call them semi-rigid. I wouldn't call them a, necessarily a moment frame like if you built these out of steel, but it does develop enough resistance where we can take this shear panel and now we have to take that load and put it into the foundation. And the way we do that is we have those two straps there and we actually have two here. The problem with this is this is a, a pretty minimum dimension at 12 inches. Um, but here we have those two other straps and you know, when, when you're dealing with shear walls, there's a thing called aspect ratio, right? So the taller this wall is in reference to its two feet in the middle. So let's say this is 10 foot tall, but only two foot wide, then 10 over two, it's a four. If this was 10 foot, um, or 10 foot over 2 is a 5, but if it was only 8 foot tall by 2, then it's a 4. So that aspect ratio number comes down, and you want a lower number there in that this height to width ratio wants to be as pretty much as low as we can get it. But um, in the case here, we're talking these are 8 foot doors, and they're 10 feet wide, and this is 2 feet wide. So the code... In, in that code reference, I believe it sets those up for two feet. You need two anchor bolts in each of these walls, but then we have these hold downs, and the hold downs actually get attached to two by posts 
that go inside that wall. So basically think of it as if I was standing on the ground and I wanted to create a very strong connection, then I would take some kind of device that comes halfway up my calf, straps to my legs, and then gets anchored into the ground. And then that joint at my ankle isn't as susceptible to movement as it would be if I didn't have those devices strapped around my calves, right? So if I don't do these hold downs, this joint here, this is free to overturn this way or free to overturn that way, which means this can just kind of rip off of that foundation. So those hold downs are what's basically taking those shear panels and attaching them to the foundation and holding it down. But those shear panels are now attached to that 12 inch LVL, which is dragging those shear loads into that and putting it into the foundation. So we have a nice rigid connection there being uh, developed by those straps that are going in there and basically holding these shear walls nice and tight against the foundation. So by adding in that LVL, it makes these openings far more rigid and less susceptible to any type of rotation. Now, you know, when you're dealing with shear values, there's basically wind and seismic or earthquake. And, you know, the earthquake, there's different zones across the country that when you look in the code book, it'll tell you, um, you know, A, B, C, D, and I think E is the... Uh, most strict, you know, if you're like in San Francisco, there's parts of New Mexico, I believe, that are at least D's or E's. But when you're dealing with wind, it um, it has a lot to do with exposure, right? So if I was, say, had this garage on the ocean shore facing the ocean, then it'd be susceptible to very high winds um, in New England. Now, if I take the same garage and I put it down in, say, Miami, then not only is it very susceptible to high winds, but almost hurt, you know, or not almost, but hurricane force winds. So extremely high winds. So based on your exposure, um, as well as all of the things we talked here, is how you develop that resistance to shear. So obviously, the more exposure you have, the higher shear requirements you're going to have. Um, so anyways, quick rundown. Garage door portals, the code reference there, we talked about it. Um, like I said, it's uh, 602.10.6.2, if you want to go and check that out. But anyways, that's what we're doing out here at the Riverside Project. All right. Big Red. Time to go to bed. So, if you're looking for more... Build Show Network, go check it out. Literally thousands of videos, they're all there. A lot of good colleagues um, putting up stuff all the time. I love watching their videos. Um, great information. So if you're looking more from me, you can find me on Instagram, Steve Basic Architect, and uh, follow along there. I'm trying to put up good information uh, almost every day. We're putting up something new. We got a lot of great, exciting projects going on. Um, yeah. We're posting up a storm. And then lastly, if you want uh, to listen in or watch the Unbuild It podcast, you have that option. It's on all the audio channels. You can go listen to it, or you can go watch it on our YouTube channel, Unbuild It podcast, Peter Yost, Jake Bruden, and myself talking about all things construction. So anyways, until next time, long live our buildings. <laughs>